genetically modified sugar beets, like, you know, this was like, you know, a great thing for farmers growing sugar beets because what they did before was a cocktail of six or seven different insecticides sprayed more often, mm -hmm. like in longer in the season. And, you know, and because of anti GMO fear in some places, they've banned the roundup ready sugar beet, but, and the farmers are going back to the previous method of six or seven pesticides. They're now spraying on their sugar beets because people are afraid of the GMO. And arguably one pesticide is better than six or seven. Mm -hmm. Like if you're arguing that like all pesticides are bad. Right. And when we reduce these as much as possible, like just by sheer numbers, spraying one once or twice is better than six or seven being sprayed more many times. Seems objectively. Right. The case, and so, yeah. right. And so these are just, you know, two examples of, you know, and again, like I said, the Roundup Ready Sugar Beet may not be the right thing for farmers mm -hmm. or growers everywhere in the world who would potentially use them. But and it is an option available to farmers and a modern technology that, you know, it saves farmers time. It lets them have a better life in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, cause like, guess what? Like all that spraying takes more work. But so, so it, it, is it a dual situation where it is about killing weeds, but mm -hmm. where does, where do the pests come in? So in the Roundup Ready case, like the weeds are the pest. Oh, okay. That's right? what we mean. Okay. That's in that Got case. Mm -hmm. Right. But like, obviously there are insects that eat sugar beets too, mm -hmm. and you want to prevent those and you may have to spray insecticide or, you know, what bears also doing is it's called stacking traits. You can have Roundup and BT in the same plant. Like mm -hmm. it's a basically, I mean, it's, it has been conferred two traits through modern molecular biology. We put two genes in there. Right. And so it's almost a little grab bag and go to the website mm -hmm. and go, I'll take this gene. I'll take this gene. A little bit. I mean, it's more designed than that. Like yeah. it's more like, oh, this would Here be good if we could have, yeah. right, this year. Like, you know, this mm -hmm. is this year's modern technology or this is this year's, you know, version of seeds. Here's our newest innovation, right? It's it's more of that than. Which, which astonishes me. I mean, I guess it doesn't astonish mm -hmm. me that it divides the public, but it intrigues me because to me, that's invigorating. To me, that we would have such a level of control on the genome that we can bestow organisms with sort of, we can just like sort of willy nilly let's give them this mm -hmm. trait this trait i mean obviously we can't abuse that power but right it, it it intrigues me how afraid people are of that process i wonder right. how what we can elucidate about that right and i mean i think like some of it comes down to it just sounds very unnatural to most people right right and they're like oh it's just not natural like moving dna around like that just Oh, I don't know. And mm -hmm. like it sort of elucidates the disgust response and therefore like fear of sure. fear of it. And like again, some like a lot of it is, you know, the large business aspect. Like they feel like, oh, large business controls these and therefore um, you know, it's a problem. And like we've already talked about two GE products and like the thing like to really impress upon people and like from the scientific point of view and the narrative, like, you know, genetically engineered or genetically modified organisms aren't one thing. Right. And so like in a good example, like another example, like we do this with bacteria all the time. So if you eat cheese, if you're a cheese eater, like somebody who likes cheese, guilty, I'll get you 99% of the cheese that's produced involves a genetically modified bacteria. Mm -hmm. Like they took the gene from, um, rennet, which is, you know, the lining of a sheep's stomach, which is what you need to produce the curds and cheese. They figured out like, oh, well, this is, you know, the gene that does that. And they put it into a bacteria and that's how cheese is made now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically in any industrialized context, like that's how cheese is made. So it, right. if you're eating cheese, you are eating a genetically modified product. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that the bacteria is there, you know, anymore. It's, you know, in the final product, like it may be a little bit, but I mean, you know, you're still eating it or like, you know, this yeah. is how we produce insulin for diabetics now. It's right. a genetically modified exactly. bacteria. Yeah, there are medical, uh, right. And so, here. right. And like, you know, another example of a plant in the world is, you know, like, I don't know if you know about the American chestnut story, but like the American chestnut used to be the dominant tree on the East coast until an imported Chinese chestnut blight. Um, that, you know, infected the Chinese chestnut tree when it could, but like the Chinese chestnut evolved with this fungus, right? And like the Chinese chestnut has tools to resist that fungus. Mm -hmm. The American chestnut did not. And it got brought in a shipment of, you know, Chinese chestnut lumber from China and 
got out into the wild and decimated um, the American chestnut forest. Like, you know, it used to be like the story used to be that a squirrel could run from the East Coast all the way to the Mississippi River without, without touching, touching the ground. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know if that's true, but this is like, Maybe you a know, bit hyperbolic, but this uh, is like, you know, these were, this was the forest yeah. of the East Coast that mm-hmm. is gone now. Like, and virtually like this was a shock to like the people at the time. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, we've lost our chestnuts and they've been replaced somewhat by oak trees. Right. And so there is an effort to bring back Mm -hmm. the American chestnut. So there's two ways that people have gone about this. They've taken the Chinese chestnut and crossbred it with the American chestnut to bring in the resistance gene from the Chinese chestnut tree into the American version. Mm -hmm. And and then you just like, so you cross in the resistance, you test in the next generation for which plants are resistant. You cross it to an American chestnut again. You figure out, you know, you basically keep crossing until you have almost all American chestnut genome again.